I'm Chris O'Hare, your Quick Win CEO. And as a CEO, I've run businesses, founded startups, consultant for others, and even won awards. But in this show, we'll be talking to entrepreneurs and experts to help you understand key concepts for your business, along with three quick wins that you could take away and apply to your business today. And every week, we'll be finding out about the entrepreneur themselves and diving into a different but important topic. And guess what? We've just hit 20 episodes. And you know what that means? It's the end of season one. So firstly, a big thank you for all the amazing feedback I've received over the past four months. It feels like such a major achievement to release an episode every Wednesday without fail. It's been a challenge, but a challenge I've loved every second of. So thank you to the guests who've given their time to share their insights. And because of the fantastic reception from all of you, I've got some exciting plans for season two. We're rolling out the red carpet to some unbelievable guests. But until then, we have all the quick wins from the last eight inspirational entrepreneurs. So here we go. But this week, we're talking about a topic that I'd like to highlight is very important for entrepreneurs to get a grasp on. And that's mental illness and mental performance. And let me just highlight why this is important. Entrepreneurs are twice as likely to suffer from depression, psychiatric hospitalization, and suicidal thoughts. They're three times more likely to suffer from substance abuse and 10 times more likely to suffer from bipolar disorder. Now with stats like these, the least I can do is help break down the barrier to allow fellow entrepreneurs to talk. Business is hard, often requiring long hours and lonely days and entrepreneurs absorb an incredible amount of stress. And you will already have heard about mindfulness, which is one tool in the battle against mental illness, but there is another, hypnotherapy. So this episode, my hypnotherapist, Dipti Tate has kindly agreed to help us understand how we can hack our brains and give us the mental resilience to succeed. Dipti has been featured in the media, including the BBC and This Morning, talking about hypnotherapy. And even if you don't feel like you're gaining value from this episode, please do me the kindness of sharing this episode with someone that might need it, because you never know what they might be going through. So here we go, Dipti. Tate. So let's talk about your top three quick wins for, for programming the mind. What's what's the biggest hacks that you can recommend that gives you the biggest results with minimal effort? So the biggest results with minimal effort is understanding that you are in control of your mind, that nobody out there controls you. And actually, it's like having an antivirus software (laughs) installed inside your mind, really. And imagine that you are are installing that type of software in. So any any kind of, um, you know, I don't want to use the word virus because we know what that means, like (laughs) in this sort of day and age. But, you know, any um, infiltration you've got agency over and Mm. you've decided no I'm not going to have that happen to me so imagine that you've got this antivirus software in your head that's one hack and then see what changes Um, maybe the second one is really sleep sleep is number one priority if you're not sleeping properly you're not emptying your stress bucket in your mind, you're not clearing your cash, you know, you're waking up in the morning with a really full up, you know, your storage is still full up, and then you try to add more, and it's like, you know, of course, you're going to get a computer says no by the end of the week, or even by the end of the day. So make sure you're sleeping properly. And if you don't know how to do that, you know, talk to someone who can help with that. So sleep is a massive brain hack. Um, and I think thinking about language, you know, like computer programming language has its own language. Other languages from other countries have their own language. And we have also got a, a brain language. 
as in self-talk, you know, what do we tell ourselves? What language do we use about ourselves? What is that conversation that's happening all day, every day inside our mind? How can we listen to that language and help ourselves with it? So turning negative language into positive language or you know, I can't do this to what if I can, you know, let's see, let's try. And it's just turning the problematic language into solution focused language. That's amazing. Quick wins. Uh, I think people are going to get a lot of value from those. So um, thank you for sharing those Dipti. Well, what a treat we have in store for you today. We get to have a peek inside the brilliant mind of one of the pioneers of social media, Thomas Power. Thomas co-founded eCademy in 1998, a networking platform for business leaders at the dawn of the internet. Since then, Thomas has gone on to author eight books and worked with several leading names, including The Apprentice's Lord Sugar, former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer, and former monk Jay Shetty. And in this podcast, Thomas tells us all about how he envisaged the future of technology from humans merging with machines, reaching singularity to cryptocurrency bulldozing the financial institutions. So here we go, Thomas Power. Let's, let's get some three quick wins uh, from you. So let's talk about um, if one of our listeners wanted to go away and start thinking about what's coming in the future to be disruptive, um, or to think about how it could affect them and their business. What three things would you say they need to, to look at? How, how would they um, take this knowledge or prediction um, and apply that to their business? What are the things they need to do? Okay, the first, the first thing is to understand the pattern shapes, trends or memes that are impacting that industry. And there are plenty of books or documents or PDFs or research reports, but, but look at all the things that are hitting that industry, every pattern, every shape, every trend, every meme, everything that's going to shock that industry. Make sure you understand all the meteorites or missiles that are coming at that industry. That's the first thing. Really do your market analysis, your market research. And then hidden in that analysis, you'll find the opportunities for that industry to renew itself, to be rebuilt, reshaped, reorganized, refinanced, whatever it might be. So I would say study the market that you're in or the threats to that market and see as it's reorganized what the new opportunities are and then calculate the capital value of those opportunities and then work out how much capital you can raise to support those opportunities. That would be my first win. Uh, and I'd apply that to any industry. Okay. Number two. I think the most important thing you need having done that is a map of where you're going. And a map typically requires a team. And so you've either got to uh, recruit a team, hire a team, build a team, or join a pack that's already a team. Um, like Bit 100, it's like joining a pack. We hunt together as a pack. And humans, when they feel unsafe, hunt in packs like dogs. And humans are efficient in packs like dogs. Like you see hyenas, hyenas are able to kill lions because they hunt in packs, even though they're a, they're a less efficient animal in terms of scale and bite power. So I would say either, either form a team, build a team, join a team or, or join a community pack where you can access all those resources. So you can then implement the outcomes that you're aiming for from your analysis and your market research of what, what's being reorganized in that market. That would be my second win. So, number, so it'd be market analysis and then form a team or become part of a team. Number three. Then I think it's about capital. You have to tell stories to raise capital. And the best storytellers raise the most capital. If we look at Elon Musk, he's the world's greatest loss making billionaire. He's never made a profit in 30 years, yet people continue to throw money at him. 
We've never seen anyone like him before. Every other entrepreneur has made a profit. He continues to never make a profit in any business ever. Whether it's PayPal, Tesla, rocket ships to Mars. So raising capital is about telling stories. So surround yourself with great storytellers who can teach you how to raise capital or you can raise capital with them. And then on board as much capital as you can for your journey across the Antarctic to feed your team because they need a lot of food to cross the Antarctic. And so I would say it would be market analysis, market research, team, and then capital. So storytelling to get the capital. And, and the best storytellers raise the most money. People always say, my God, how did they, how did they raise so much money? How did they get, how, why did they get 6 million? They got 60 million. And I just said, I just say, well, they told a better story. Mm. And people say, well, it can't be down to that. And I say, it is. So make sure you surround yourself with very good storytellers who know how to raise capital. So you have food for your journey across the Antarctic. Fantastic. Imagine going through this pandemic without the internet. It's like a story from a dystopian movie. But we do have the internet and it's enabled you to talk to your family and see their faces, order food straight to your door or work collaboratively with your colleagues. And we're in a world where the internet has brought people together through tribes, but also created echo chambers. And these are the thoughts of Penny Power OBE, co-founder of Academy, the first social media platform for business established in 1998. And Penny gives us a glimpse into the rise and fall of a tech business and how she desperately tried to cling on to her belief that business should be personal. And Penny never let go of this belief and has now authored a book, Business is Personal. And we also talk about how technology has been used in a cold, unfriendly way, and that it doesn't have to be that way. So here we go, Penny Power. Move on to our um, your quick wins when it comes to making business personal, because obviously you got this great book which I have here. Um, so, if a business owner was listening to this uh, podcast, what's the top three things that you would recommend to make business personal? Well, it starts with um, really investing in some self-awareness about yourself and really thinking about, and, I, and people think, I used to think that was terribly indulgent, you know, what are your values and how are you taking care of yourself and really understanding your character and your personality. Um, it's, it's the journey I took myself on and, you know, I was 53 when I went on that journey I, and I'd love to have done it earlier in my life. I think my choices and some of the outcomes of things that I've done would have been very different. Um, <clears throat> so I would say, you know, that's a very quick win is, and it will take quite, you, you quite a while to do it, but is really understand yourself and what's, and, and it can start off literally with a piece of paper on your desk, writing down the moments that you're happy and the moments that you're not, the triggers that, that trigger anxiety or stress, the people that warm you and make you feel happy and the people that are drains in your life. You know, there are some very, you could literally do that just on your desk. And, and it's very interesting when you do that because you start to define things. So there was a lovely interview, Jack Ma interview with Elon Musk. And Jack Ma just did this real throwaway comment and I wrote it down, I've used it as a quote a lot, which is, uh, a clever man knows what he wants, a wise man knows what he doesn't want. And I think that's sometimes the benefit of age is that I've become very aware of what I don't want and the people I don't want and the things that I aren't right for me in my life. I think you try and fit in a lot when you're younger. I need to fit in, I need to fit in, I need to expand, I need to... Um, but you, if you do those things on your desk, you start to realise, I do want that, I don't want that, and start to have that courage to change things. And then, you know, that word courage is very impo important because a lot of us resist change. Um, we fear uncertainty, but there is something in us all where we have to, and I had to do that, embrace change and be excited by uncertainty. And if you fe hear this and you fear change and you 
are somebody who requires certainty, I would say those are two areas of your character that you need to start to work on. And I had to do it. And I did a test three years ago online and I was driven by certainty. And um, I did it again three years later, fairly recently. And I've now have moved from that into loving uncertainty. And I think we can change our character. I don't think any of us should ever change our personality, but we can change and learn from our character about where we've resisted things and, and go into that growth mindset, um, which is a great book to read, by the way, by Carol Dweck. Yeah. And so in terms of your other quick wins. Um, <laughs> that wasn't very quick, was it? No, no, that was a, that was a big one. Um, in terms of the other two, maybe a bit shorter. <laughs> well, I suppose I just gave them all in one go, didn't I? I did. Yeah. I think you, you know. Uh, but I, another quick win would be to start. This is a fun one. Is start noticing your happy moments in your day. Yeah. L literally, start saying this is a happy moment. I have seven. My cup of tea. I walk in the morning. My first coffee. You know, I have a number of things. And I call it a happy moment, and I register it in my brain as a happy moment. So that at the end of the day, whatever's happened, I know I've had seven happy moments. All right. Yeah, hundred percent. And your last one. And the last one. Um, I would say go into find a small community around you, build one, or go and find one. Start realizing that small is beautiful and allow yourself to open up find somewhere where you have permission to just be really in your truth and that doesn't mean being highly vulnerable or sharing all your crap with other people it just means go somewhere where you are not ever having to pretend and build something around you like that or join something like that great thank you have you ever wondered how you could apply software development methodologies to optimize your business well, management consultant and entrepreneur Matthew Thiessen has done just that. Whilst working as an IT consultant, Matthew saw the benefit of the software development life cycle and how the five stages of planning, analysis, design, implementation and maintenance can be applied to your business. And as an entrepreneur, Matthew also tells us about his journey so far and describes how he was influenced by his father's entrepreneurial ways, including working in the family's wimpy businesses back in South Africa. Matthew is very accomplished with a number of impressive qualifications. So it was only a matter of time before he started his own businesses here in the UK. So here we go, Matthew Thiessen. As a management consultant, what are your top three uh, business management quick wins that you'd like to share with the listeners? Sure. So. I think for anyone who's, and I'm going to talk specifically in the business context here, because I think, you know, the purpose of this discussion is not really as much about the IT. It's more about what does it mean in the business context? Mm -hmm. So I think for anyone who's if you're starting out or you're further down the road, if you're listening to this and you thought, hey, hang on, I've learned a lot today. I want to just go and challenge your mindset anyway, because mastering mindset, excuse me, is so important uh, from the onset. So uh, quick win number one. You need to understand what's going on in your head. If you're not spending time to write goals, if you're not spending time to quiet in the mind, you know, Jay Shetty talks a lot about the monkey mind and the monk mind. And I think you really need to realize that society very much is geared towards the, the monkey mind. And that's distraction, uh, procrastination. I mean, TV, television, uh, I'm trying to think about how the, 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 the saying goes, but it's basically just... Um, how it, it, it is robotic it almost like gets you just thinking in a very a single-minded track but books and seminars and audio um, podcasts etc will open up some of your your periphery so the first one is mastering mindset the second one is being very clear about the goals that you're trying to achieve in your business so if you're saying i want to do business because i want to be an entrepreneur you're probably not going to get very far but what if you are sitting down and saying, you know, like I've got a five year goal, I've got, a, in fact, I've got a one year goal, a three year goal, a five year goal and a 10 year goal. And you're now breaking each one of those down and working backwards. then you've got the end in mind. And we quite often refer to that as your uh, exit. And as long as you've got your exit in mind and you're very clear about where you want to go, then that's going to put you in very good stead for, for your business. 
So the first one, mindset, mastering mindset. The second one, having goals and being very clear about the end so that you can work backwards from there. And the last one, is just having a good understanding and a grip on your finances. You know, so often I see people, and especially with some of my clients, they've got all their businesses uh, wrapped up into their personal affairs and personal account. Now, this can become very problematic when you have to do tax returns and you have to declare personal income versus job income versus business income versus, I mean, you can just imagine how that can become. And now you have to unravel all of that. It becomes very complicated very quickly and can probably land you in some very hot water. Not only that, but your business's survive, ability to survive is only as good as how clear you are about the, the, the profit numbers, the actual costs, the uh, gross income, the cash flow forecasts, the um, sales forecasts. You need to have, be very clear about those um, and how they break down into real terms so that your business can survive and thrive. Um, so yeah, that's number three, having good understanding and grip on your finances. I love those. Um, I, I agree with all of them. I think they're great. And I love that you uh, you name dropped Jay Shetty as well, because I thought that was really good as well. And not a lot of people know um, of him in the Western world, unless unless you kind of stumbled across him um, on Facebook or, or some kind. So, yeah, great, great uh, learnings and teachings he, he gives us. Um, and the goals working backwards. I was just having a conversation with someone yesterday. Exactly that. What's your five year goal and how do you work back? then set the uh, the steps, um, individual steps to get there. And then at least you know you're on the right path when you're thinking about those goals that you're setting. So yeah. really good stuff. Um, so how can how can people learn more about like this business management that you, you're talking about um, and how they can support their business with these skill sets? Yeah, what resources? Sure. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, of course, there's, there's reading books, attending seminars, uh, going on to Clubhouse, uh, you know, just really make Google your friend. And I'll never forget moving over to this country. And in, in South Africa, data is, a, is at a premium. It costs a lot of money to have. And I was like, you, my sister, how do I get to point A or point B? And she says, oh, Matthew, just Google it. And I took that completely for granted because growing up in Africa, that wasn't the thing. But since coming to the UK, I certainly Google everything. So there's books, there's seminars, there's Clubhouse, there's Google. But importantly, it's to align yourself with people that are like-minded. And if you're, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. So what you need to do is you need to align yourself with business mentors, coaches, advisors, people who have walked down the path. Because if, they're, if, if you're trying to go it alone, and I see it all the time, people are like, oh, I'm not going to make that investment. I'm going to do it on my own steam. Great. I understand where you're coming from. However... You're going to make the mistakes that all of us who have been down that path um, have made, and it's going to slow your progress down. So if you're serious about learning about business, if you're serious about understanding how to move yourself forward, if you want to get started on your journey, you need to align with people that have done it before, people who know what they're talking about. And it's not to say that everyone does. There are a lot of people who don't, but don't be shy to invest in yourself, because if you're not investing in yourself, the biggest mistake people make is to say, oh, but it's too expensive, and when will I see results? Rather than looking at it, how can I invest in myself, and what am I going to learn through that experience? If you can shift your mindset to understand that it's not an expense, but an investment, Robert Kiyosaki, again, to drop another name there, is he always talks about um, good debt versus bad debt. And I think always investing in yourself is always good debt. Because even if you don't see a return right now, what you will do is plant seeds that will take you in the right direction. Even going back to your goals. If you've got an end goal in mind, it's only by setting that intention and moving towards that goal that the rest of them, the laws of the universe, will bring those things forward if you're consistent and persistent in your action taking. So that's probably my biggest thing. If you're really serious and you want to learn, you need to find the right people that can help you and take you on your journey. 100%. Find a mentor as well. I think that's a good that's a good one. And I'm sure that lots of people after this po uh, podcast are going to think, oh, this Matthew guy, he's, he sounds all right. And as an entrepreneur, do you not stop talking about business? And if you change the topic away from business, do you get lost for words? 
Well, me too. And I found out this week's guest, Hannah Power, does this also. And as you'll hear, Hannah is an enthusiastic entrepreneur who founded personal branding agency, Powerful Leaders. And in this episode, we talk about what is a personal brand, how to maximize your personal brand online, why Hannah hates Instagram, and how to work out which social media platform you should focus on. I learned a lot of great advice from Hannah, and I thoroughly enjoyed recording this episode. Here we go. Hannah Power. So what are your three personal brand quick wins? Now let's wrap up the show and, and what's your quick wins? So quick wins is, 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 is this for the audience? Yeah. For, to, to listen. Yes. It? Yeah. So, okay. so, so if you were going to uh, help them uh, with their personal branding, what are the yeah. three quick wins that you can give them? The first thing is to really identify the why, why you want to do it. What is the vision of the world? And I don't mean why in terms of, oh, I want to do it because I want to get a new job or I want to build my business. What is your vision of the world? What would you like the world to look like? What is your view of how the world should be? Some of the things I've shared in this session, this call, this call, sorry, this podcast, this interview is about um, the way that I see the world, the way that the impact that I want to have in the world, the little mark, the little dent to use um, Steve Jobs' term of that I want to leave in the world. So the first thing is, is the why, what's your real core motivator? And that will also help you get out of bed in that earlier question if you're driven by that. The next thing is what is your one, think about what is your one thing. And I know the word niche is used a lot and I think niching can really stress people out. Your niche doesn't have to be as black and white as I do this for this industry, this service in this industry. You can create whatever niche you want. It's about the thing that you put everything under. Um, So personal branding is my thing. I have so many other interests that sit under that, which actually all equate into personal branding. I could talk about mindset. I can talk about fear. I can talk about time management. I can talk about whatever under the one thing of personal branding that gives context, that gives people an anchor of, oh, Hannah Power, she does that. Your one thing. The next thing would be thinking about who is the audience that you you want to be listening to you? What do you want them to be leaving with? What do they need to hear? And don't, again, it doesn't have to be as linear as this demographic, this, this, this age sat in this location with this education, could be looking at more around the psychographics of, you know, what are their goals and motivations? What are their pain points? What are their values? Um, and I think answering those three questions first, those are what I call the foundations of your brand. The rest of it starts to kind of filter over that. But those are things that we don't do. And we go, oh, I've got to be on Twitter. I've got to be on Clubhouse. But actually, without having real clarity on those three things first, what you really believe and why you're doing it, what your one thing is and who you're who you're speaking to. Without doing that, you're just adding to the noise. I like those quick wins. Thank you for that. And have you ever wondered how you can grow your LinkedIn network? Or have you thought about creating your own videos? What about combining both of those? That's exactly what we'll be talking about in this episode and why you should focus on the LinkedIn platform. Our guest this week, Kim Slade, founder of Touch Video Academy, an expert of simplifying video creation to help everyone become a content creator. And as a testament to this, I've also been a student on Kim's beginner to creator course learning how to use my iPhone to create professional looking videos. And in fact, this is where I started my content creation journey. And if that's not enough, Kim's clients include a few notable brands such as the National Trust and Apple Store. This is a topic I think will be very popular. So here we go, Kim Slade. Let's get these quick wins. You've probably uh, discussed a lot of them already um, throughout the, the, the podcast, but in terms of condensing that down into three, your top three, you know, LinkedIn video quick wins, what would those be? I'd say keep it short. So people are scrolling. They just want to see something quick and easy to consume. Um, so keep it short. Keep it, I'd say, under a minute if you can. And if you need to deep dive into a further thing, then you can say, oh, if you want any more info, uh, you know, drop me a comment and I'll send you a a longer piece of content or a free thing or whatever it is. So keep it short. Um, make sure you have you know, sub, a headline and subtitles work really well on LinkedIn. And I mean a physical one that you can see. Um, and I'm sure if you've got, if you're doing what you do, you've, you've got, you use that on, on, on some of these videos, um, you know, you put, you put a headline. So when someone's scrolling, they can see, okay, 
that's what I'm going to get from this video. So without watching a minute of video, they can in a split second, a couple of seconds go, oh, if I watch this video, I'm going to get a tip on how to make videos better on LinkedIn. So someone's that's going to make someone stop. Um, so he headline and subtitles as well, because a lot of people uh, watch with, their, with the sound off. Um, so I'd, I'd say that's one quick win is headline uh, and, and subtitles. Uh, and then the last one is, is make it about the viewer. Don't make it about you. You can use stories about yourself and use yourself as an example or a vehicle for what you're saying. Um, but actually you need to make every piece of content valuable to another person. And I don't mean it has to be something super helpful. It just has to be, you're doing it for them because as soon as you're doing it for you, it becomes more of a sales message and it becomes more, uh, not as easy to, to, to watch and people just don't, don't want to be sold to basically. So if you, if you're going out to help people, then your content's going to go much further. Yeah, it's that, that feeling of being sold to just immediately turns people off and they uh, they won't come back and try and get more help from you. So I yeah, completely agree with that one. Do you want the secrets to build your own 100,000 followers on social media? Well, our guest has 40,000 followers on TikTok, 27,000 on LinkedIn, 20,000 on Twitter, and has even worked with the likes of a heavyweight boxing champion, Anthony Joshua. Our guest, Paul Brown, is an influencer in his own right and founder of Bait Bean Media, a social media and video production company. Paul gives us some incredibly useful insights and actionable tips that even I've been inspired to do myself. Paul's approach is, in my opinion, that of a viral hunter. He's always ready, tapped into the networks and waiting to maximize the opportunity to create the next piece of content that rides a social media wave. And this was a refreshingly different podcast episode that I think will give you an alternative perspective on social media. So here we go, Paul Brown. Let's dive into your, your hacks, your three top quick wins that you would tell people to grow a social media following? Yeah, let's just go over the three I've done in a bit of detail. Number one is obviously, you, you know your industry. Why aren't you talking about it more? I.e. yourself, Chris, you know, if you want more of that social media, why aren't you talking about your products that you've got? Blah, blah, blah. Number two is um, creating the content get into a system of creating short, sharp, little videos that you constantly post that don't take a lot of time to produce. Probably the biggest thing that I do is trim. So a 15 second video, and then I'll turn it to a seven second video. That's how brutal I am. The first second I speak is where I trim it to. And if it's like, hello, I'm Paul, that goes. This is the new iPhone 13. What's your thoughts on it? End of trim. And that's the only bit I'm using. I'm really brutal on my trimming. And then, and then the last thing is you have to grow your audience. So just because you post something, that means you have to build a community. And, you know, if Ben gives you some advice about what mic to buy, send Ben a DM thanking him and then giving him some insight of what you actually learned. So it is a 24 seven job of actually growing your community and being personable with your community. Nice. I like those quick wins. Have you heard of this new audio only social media platform called Clubhouse? And it seems to be taking the world by storm. Well, in this episode, we find out what it is, how it can benefit you and whether it's a child of the pandemic. It just seemed to make people feel fed up with Zoom video or fed up with not being able to connect with people socially. And this is the first time we've done this in our podcast. But we've invited back one of our previous guests, Alex Chislin, the podcast expert who has helped people get top 10 podcasts, but also has his own number one podcast. Why you ask? Well, because in the short time span that we last interviewed Alex about podcasts, he's gone from not knowing what Clubhouse is to over 12,500 followers in the space of 100 days. 
That's a ridiculous amount of growth and something that I've never seen before. If you don't know anything about Clubhouse, you need to listen to this episode. So here we go. Again, Alex Chisnell. I want to get your three hacks, your three hacks when it comes to, you know, Clubhouse, building your Clubhouse following, your top three quick wins. What would those be? Building your Clubhouse following, three quick wins. So I I would say... Um, let's go follow people that you you truly resonate with reach out to them and see if there are grounds for collaboration um, i.e you've gone in a room you've listened to them send them a message on instagram that you enjoyed speaking to them that you're thinking of starting a room hosting x y and z we you would love to um, host a room with them because you, you know, resonated with what they were saying. So that would be one hack because you, you, you can't do it on your own. Uh, you really can't. Two, um, it would be as soon as you can start doing your own rooms and don't be put off by the fact that two people might turn up. There's still two people, two more people than you knew yesterday that you impacted yesterday. Um, and third is, you know, this is broad general advice that you can take for anything in life, but just be consistent with it. I saw, I've seen so many people on the app who I've become friends with who stopped doing that. They did a couple of rooms. They ran a room for weeks, maybe a couple of months, and then they stopped. For me, it's like anything, whether you're saving money, whether you are, you know, building a business, small actions compounded over time lead to success. And even though, it is really tough doing something daily. Um, I've definitely seen the benefit of doing that on a regular basis, literally just being consistent with it. Um, so yeah, those would, be, those would be my three quick wins. Those would be my okay. three quick wins, yeah. Some amazing quick wins there, and we'll be back with season two soon. Make sure you press the subscribe button to be the first to know. But what was your favorite episode of the season? You can tell me on Clubhouse, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, or YouTube, where you can find me with at Hair Digital. But until next time, I'm your quick win CEO, signing out.